Hello everyone, welcome to watch my presentation for the 19th International Conference on Learning. My name is Hua, I'm from the University of Sydney. I'm going to talk about modeling vocabulary knowledge. And in this study, I try to build up a model and to test what's the uh, receptive knowledge we needed for the word to develop into a productive use. There are two important concepts that we need to understand. The first is receptive and the other is productive vocabulary knowledge. And here are some of the summaries from the previous research regarding the definition of these two terms. We can see that receptive vocabulary knowledge is defined by Warren as the ability to translate from the target language to the first language. In Lofer's study, it was the ability to retrieve the word form or recognize the word form in web study and to define and be able to comprehend its meaning. We can conclude that the receptive vocabulary knowledge is to recognize and to retrieve. And productive vocabulary knowledge is defined as the ability to translate from the first language to the second language or in speaking or writing, you will be able to retrieve the word meaning and uh, produce the word form to express the meaning. So we can conclude that the productive vocabulary knowledge is the ability to produce and to use. Looking at all these previous definitions, it seems like they are restricting in the form and meaning aspect of a word. But according to Herrickson's model, vocabulary knowledge is a lot more complex construct. She proposed that vocabulary knowledge contains three dimensions. The first is from partial to precise, understanding of meaning. And the second dimension is the depth dimension, which refers to the network building. Words are believed to store as a network in the brain, and the stronger, the more links between the words, the deeper you will have on the vocabulary knowledge. And these two dimensions are related to the comprehension of word knowledge. And the third dimension is receptive and productive vocabulary use. This dimension is related to the access and control of the comprehension of word knowledge. This model is a bit different from Nation's 2001 model, which we call it a comprehensive model. Uh, he listed up to date the most comprehensive list of word aspects and they can be categorized into form, meaning and use. Nations said that uh, they can be mastered either receptively and productively. Therefore, examining the receptive to productive vocabulary knowledge and their relations should include other aspects and look at it systematically as a multidimensional construct. So far, except Paul Mirror's 2004 V-Links that actually capture the depth dimension as a network. There are not many well-developed and validated tests to capture the depth dimension as a network building. I would define this depth dimension as the form, morphology, association, and collocation. Let's look at some of the previous research looking at receptive and productive vocabulary knowledge and their relations. Most of studies are associated with the sizes of these two types of vocabulary knowledge. A very consistent findings from the previous research found that the receptive vocabulary size is larger than the productive ones because productive vocabulary knowledge is considered as a more advanced proficiency of the vocabulary used. And in terms of the relations change in the development, research found that the receptive vocabulary knowledge grows faster than the productive ones. Therefore, the gaps between them becomes larger and larger. However, in one of the research that I've done with a Hirsch, looking at Chinese high school students learning vocabulary of in a normal classroom setting over 10 weeks period. We found that students' productive vocabulary knowledge actually grows faster than the receptive ones. This might relate to the tasks that they received in those 10 weeks of classroom instruction. The effectiveness of tasks is actually another big area of study looking at these two types of vocabulary knowledge. In web study, it is found that the receptive vocabulary tasks are more likely to promote receptive vocabulary knowledge, while the productive tasks are more likely to increase the productive ability
in vocabulary use. However, if we want to see what make a word grow from receptive to productive use, besides that looking at the effectiveness of the tasks, we actually have to examine uh, what aspects of knowledge or what dimension of vocabulary knowledge this task had an effect on so as to promote productive use of a word. And from the previous research looking at vocabulary acquisition and learning, we could see that from host and the colleague study, which examined 50 hours of classroom instructed time, the result shows 70% of the teaching time was allocated to meaning teaching, followed by 25% to form and 3% to collocation. And therefore, we could see that in terms of vocabulary, teaching meaning takes up a very important role in these uh, learning activities. And in Hastrop and Harrison's project, they traced a group of primary school students over three years and looking at the vocabulary knowledge in three different dimensions. They found that partial understanding do exist. They were able to identify two to three different degrees of partial understanding. And in terms of the depth dimension, a very gradual but slow development was found. In terms of the productive use of the new adjective, they found that the development can be traced, but students are still heavily rely on the nuclear adjectives that they are more comfortable to use in producing the language. In Schmidt 1998 study, where he also traced uh, three university students over one academic year, he found that spelling was not a problem for them and the meaning sense improved and their word association knowledge proceeds to more native-like over one year of study. He also found that some of the aspects of these vocabulary knowledge are interrelated. So again, from these studies, we could see um, the spelling and meaning seems to be the most important aspect in the vocabulary development process. Zavara testified Harrison's three-dimensional model and found that there's a statistical significant relationship between students' actual vocabulary knowledge and the other five aspects of vocabulary knowledge that she captured. And best uh, pair of predictors are students' self-reported vocabulary knowledge and vocabulary size. Based on these previous research, my study tried to look at interface between receptive and productive vocabulary knowledge uh, among a group of 513 Chinese high school students over four months period of time. Two time waves of vocabulary tests were given to the students, one set of them at the beginning of the semester and the other at the end of the semester. Then through this test performance, I tried to see this relationship between receptive and productive vocabulary knowledge and how these uh, ch relations change over time. A multitask approach was used to capture the construct and uh, 26 target words were chosen. Here are the aspects I'm going to measure in the test instruments. The meaning aspect was captured by a revised uh, vocabulary knowledge scale. A multiple choice will be to capture the form understanding. So please students were required to choose the correct spelled words out of three other distractors. And morphology was captured by a table task. This table tried to elicit students' knowledge of the word class. The target words was listed in the table and the student were required to write out the other word classes of the target words. And reads word association test was used to capture the students' collocation and association word knowledge. And the productive use was captured by uh, one task of sentence writing. Students were required to write more than two sentences for this task, but only one sentence should include the target words. The other sentence is additional information to show that the student really can use the word in an appropriate context. Here I'm going to present you some initial findings based on time wave 1. So we could see the mean and standard deviation of all these tests. 
we could see that students achieved best in the form where the percentage of the mean score of the total score is 74. The second was association and followed by collocation. And the lowest uh, percentage is the productive vocabulary use, which is 32%. And this is not surprising because productive use is the most demanding task of the all, and it is also considered as more advanced knowledge of the receptive understanding as well. Uh, let's look at the correlation matrix of all these aspects. All the correlations are positive and statistically significant. When it's positive, uh, we could say that the development in any one of the aspects links to the development of the other aspect. And we could see that generally uh, the correlation are quite high. The two correlations highlighted form and meaning and association and collocation are considered as quite high. And bear in mind that the same target words were captured through five different tests. So high correlation is expected because mm, this study is actually looking at the internal structure of, of word knowledge. Collocation and association cor uh, correlation is higher than the other correlations. I think it's partly because of the nature of the task, where uh, one task was used to capture two aspects, and possibly doing one session would give some hint for students to complete the other session. The correlation between meaning and productive use is the highest because meaning is one of the most important aspects in the vocabulary use. If a student does not understand the meaning at all, there's no way he or she can use the word productively. Here is the regression result. Let's look at the adjusted R-square, which shows the predictive percentage of the aspect or the model to productive vocabulary use. Meaning was able to predict 76% of the productive use. The F change was statistically significant at 0 0.001 level. When form was added into the model, R square change is only 0 0.003, which is not very high. However, it's still statistically significant. The R square change um, with morphology added into the model is even higher than the form and it is statistically significant at 0 0.001 level. However, when association and collocation were added into the model, it does not make the F change statistically significant because the adjusted R square does not increase that much. So a model with five aspects, which are form, meaning, morphology, association, and collocation, this model with five aspects totally predict 78% of the productive vocabulary use. What are the implications for vocabulary teaching and learning? What aspects do we teach? Form and meaning are important and basic aspects that students should require before they proceed to the depth understanding. So these aspects are the ones that st uh, teachers should give more attention to and students should also give more attention to while they are learning the words. Does it mean that the collocation and association are the ones that we should ignore? Um, actually not. Um, as the correlation study suggests, vocabulary knowledge is a systematic and very complex construct. Any aspects should not be ignored in the teaching and learning process. Then uh, the second question would be how much effort do we spend on each aspect? And we could see that form meaning and morphology had uh, these models predicts over 70% of the productive use. And probably we should spend more time in the classroom to teach these aspects. Though the F change by adding collocation and association into the model does not perform statistically significant, it doesn't mean that we should ignore these two aspects. From the cost and effective perspective, association and collocation should take up less time than the other aspects in the classroom teaching. And that's all for my presentation. And if you have any comments and questions, you are welcome to email me at hua.zhong at sydney.com.
www.edu.au